The sophisticated six. Twenty-five. Seven. Eleven. Twelve. Fourteen. Seven. This is the length of our most frequently used passwords for all of our accounts. Today we're going to be talking about passwords and how hackers hack your passwords so that they can break into your accounts. So starting out uh, our podcast today, we're going to talk about some of the most frequently used com uh, password combinations in the world. So going back from five, we've got one five times. Four, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The third most commonly used password is QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Literally the first, the first row of keys on your keyboard all across. Number two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the most commonly used password in the world, one, two, three, four, five, six. Please, if you use one of these passwords, just, just change it. It's so, like, it's easy. Like, yeah, I think it's of, interesting that the, of the top five, only one of them contains any type of letters at all. Shout out to some of, the, of our more creative common passwords. At number 21, we have Google. Um, <laughs> at number 16, we have seven sevens. At number 14... They want good luck. That's yeah, they want good luck. <laughs> at number 14, we have six sixes. Um, at number 12, we have my noob. Crowd favorite. Crowd favorite. <laughs> and at number eight, we have password. All this information we got uh, was from the telegraph.co.uk. So one of the more important things uh, about social media is how do they uh, is not only your in your interaction with your friends and family and whoever else, but also how do they protect your well your account? Because I when I log on to my Facebook account. I type my email or my phone number in, and then I type in my password, and I'm automatically into my account. So if you look on Facebook's page, they only require you to use six characters in your password. They don't have to be uppercase, they don't have to be lowercase, they don't have to be special characters, just a flat six characters or more. It's all you have to do. And, if a, and using data mining, hackers can easily figure out information like your email or like your interests or your name. Well, your name is actually very easy to find. So using those, they can, and if, they can just easily put your email and your phone number in, and then it's only, it's only six characters. It truly doesn't take that much long, a longer, long to brute force it in. And they can easily get in. There are also other ways, such as um, having a, one of your friends have been previously hacked and they just send you an email or a message, I mean, in Facebook right then and off. So one of the more important things uh, about social media is how they, is not only your, in, your interaction with your friends and family and whoever else, but also how do they protect your, well, your account? Because I, when I log on to my Facebook account, I type my email or my phone number in and then I type in my password and I'm automatically into my account. So if you look on Facebook's page, they only require you to use six characters in your password. They don't have to be uppercase, they don't have to be lowercase, they don't have to be special characters, just a flat six characters or more. It's all you have to do. And, if a, and using data mining, hackers can easily figure out information like your email or like your interests or your name. Well, your name is actually very easy to find. So using those, they can, and if, they can just easily put your email and your phone number in, and then it's only, it's only six characters. It truly doesn't take that much long, a longer, long to brute force it in. And they can easily get in. There are also other ways, such as um, having a, one of your friends have been previously hacked, and they just send you an email or a message, I mean, in Facebook right then and off. As a matter of fact, my Facebook was recently hacked by hackers who were able to achieve my password. So last week I received a message on Facebook from a friend, which seemed real to me at the time, that said I was on CNN and I was going viral. So I clicked on the picture and clicked <laughs> on the link. Not funny, we're on. That's all right. I know I said I wouldn't laugh. <laughs> Won't do it again after this podcast. Classic Catherine. So I clicked on the picture and it brought me to another page where it asked for me to fill out my Facebook information such as my username and password. I did that 
And then ultimately, I ended up spamming every Facebook friend I had, which sent the original uh, message I got at telling others that they were on CNN going viral. So from this, I was wondering what can I do to prevent this from happening again? Wait, first things first, what was your password? <sighs> I'm ashamed. Dog wolf one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> that might be your problem. I think it probably was my problem, Oron. From this, I can tell, obviously I'm a girl and I like dogs. To hackers, this is probably a key pinpoint and very obvious to them that this could be a possible password for a 19-year-old girl. Wait, so what if your password is like completely randomized? One of the ways hackers can get into your account is a method called password breaking. This is where hackers forcibly, uh, quote unquote, break passwords by uh, changing every single you know, combination of letters. So you have 26 lowercase letters, 26 uppercase letters, 10 digits, and 33 special characters. This works out to be 95. So you have a password slot, you have 95 different options to put a character in there. So let's talk about, we had our average length of passwords in the beginning of our episode. Mine was 11. So for me, to guess my password randomly from a computer generated software, it would be 95 to the 11th power. That works out to be 1 in 5.69 5 times 10 to the 21st. So that's a kind of a really random guess. You're not going to get it. Um, now let's talk about time wise. I have average hacker probably is going to have a, a fairly powerful computer, maybe using a 4 gigahertz processor. Running at a 4 gigahertz processor to guess my password in particular, it would take approximately 2.7 times 10 to the sixth years. So this method is really impractical for longer passwords. But talk about a password that's maybe seven characters long. You know, you're talking about a one in 95 to the seventh chance. That's only going to take about 12.12 .12 days. Still really long to guess a password, but much more practical. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe. Actually, the best way to have an effective password is not by using all the special characters and punctuation, but it's just by making your password longer. But wait, what about hap what happened today? What, what happened, happened today? today? Well, according to NBC, ABC News Twitter account was uh, hacked by who they believe are Russian hackers, and they had some lovely things to tweet out, like, Trump, our Lord and our Savior. And when they proceeded to the PR people of the ABC News and Good Morning America accounts to delete these tweets, the hackers maintained their presence and said, secure your stuff, man, ha ha ha. It was actually pretty uh, ridiculous how they rid ridiculed ABC News. They definitely had a short password. Well, another option is they could have had a decent password, but they could have just had a keylogger installed. What do you mean by what's a keylogger? Well, a keylogger is a program that can be installed on your computer that just takes note of all the keystrokes that you press, and it compiles it into a file that people can remotely access. So if someone had logged on from that computer, it would gather all the keys pressed on it, and they can backtrack the password from that. So like referencing social media, there's so many of us that spend hours uh, daily. As we said in our podcast last time, we spend uh, an absurd amount of time a day on technology. And as we learned in class, Facebook is one of the most visited websites on a daily basis. Um, looking at Facebook, we learned that um, all these kinds of social media networks have honeycomb frameworks, which include the, uh, include the elements of identity, conversation, sharing, presence, relationships, reputation, and groups. And if you are hacked, then what is the point of the presence or the relationship setting on these social media um, platforms? Yeah, exactly. And that's why in order to uh, prevent yourself from getting hacked, you should start looking into better ways to protect yourself. One of those ways to do it is to make a better password. Now, websites often require you to have lowercase and uppercase letters and sometimes a number. But what you should be doing is you should also be including special characters in it if possible to help increase the size of the base number for the brute force method that my friend Joe talked about earlier. But the majority of passwords that are difficult to break into are just long. And so if you just make a long string of characters that are really nonsensical, that's a 
really good password provided you can remember it. Especially considering one of the more popular techniques involves picking out uh, words in the dictionary. That's a good place that most hackers start. Words in the dictionary and go looking for those in various combinations. So if you use words that aren't really words, you make a really good password for that. Another way to make a stronger password is a two-way function. This means that you have your username, you have your login, you log in and you do your username, but then you also receive a code to either your email or your text. And that code only has a certain amount of time before it expires. So in essence, if there was a hacker just knowing your username and your password, they wouldn't have access to your email per se, hopefully if you're not using that same password, watch out for that, then they wouldn't be able to find that code to log in. So stay tuned for those. Yeah, there's also another way which is called account monitoring. And this, this places a lot of uh, trust and also requires a lot of resources of the um, company that, well, of the site that you're logging into. So what this requires is for them to actually monitor all the accounts that are, that are created, um, for, let's say, like the, for their websites like Amazon or Steam. And they would monitor them for illicit activity or unusual activity. Actually, I think that happened to you, Evan, right? Yeah, it did. I was uh, monitoring my email one time, just scrolling through, and I found one from Steam. Steam has something called Steam Guard, where they detect a login from a computer that's not yours. They shoot you an email. And I got an email that uh, somewhere in the middle of Russia, someone attempted to log into my account. And that's what spawned the 25-character password that I now use for Steam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I think, um, are there any other ways? Guys, I like all your ideas, but I'm thinking something a little bit more high tech. I think biometrics is another great way to improve your passwords. This is scanning different parts of your body, and those are parts that are you know just specific to you, like your your fingerprint, your thumbprint, your um, retinas, or even your tongue. Those things, you know, people really can't. They have a harder time copying. Someone thinks she's unique. <laughs> All right, well, so let's just start wrapping this up, and I, I've already made fun of her a couple times, so right. I'm a let me finish. So I'm okay uh, with kind of wrapping it up at this point, and I see we're kind of sort of running out of time. Because you're the one who decides when we wrap it up. More or less, yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the really important things that you should get out of this podcast is that you need to use a good password. You can't have a really short password. Try to make it as long as you can, but at the same time, use it, um, make sure it's a password that you can actually use in real life. So don't use a 500 word password, uh, 500 character password. Don't smash Be your face on the keyboard. Remember it. That's true. Cause if you smash your face on the keyboard, you won't, you won't be able to look and see what, what letters you're typing in. Thank you for explaining it. <laughs> you're welcome. Made it so much better. Um, also, um, when you're on social media, please, please, please use, um, be a mindful user of social yes. media. Thank you. If you're out there seeing people say, um, hail Trump from the Good Morning America account, take a second guess. Take another look at it. And if you're seeing accounts such as Good Morning America, which is a national television station, having a problem with hackers, chances are that your accounts are right next to it. So make sure your password incorporates even the things that we had mentioned before. I wouldn't go as far as uh, Kaylin with her biological protections. I, I, I think that's pretty, in, uh, I, no, not biomedical, come on. It's um, biometrics. Biometrics. Oh. But I, I still think it's, it's actually really important because just being able to, if they fake a thumbprint is a hell of a lot more difficult than being able to fake a couple like 20, 30 characters. But going off what you were saying also, it's really important to not do what uh, Catherine did and click on an article that looked legit, but and it kind of didn't even look legit. It said you've been seen on CNN. But it, it happens said, to all of but us. But it said <laughs> it, it said CNNmoney.com on the on the actual picture that when she clicked on it, and then it sent a the, then they got all of her data through face uh, through Facebook legally, and then they just guessed her password from her likes. It's important to do uh, to make sure you don't do that kind of stuff. 